morning. I want to make sure you're aware of some things that are happening in the life of our church in uh, the next couple hours and the next couple of days. If you have one of your worship bulletins there, you can turn on the inside there and you find several different things. We want to remind you about a couple things happening today. Following our worship service, we'll have a uh, church conference and, and invite the church members to stay and, uh, and participate in that with us. And then uh, right after that will be a baked potato luncheon and that the money for that will go towards our Ecuador uh, mission trip this summer, so you're going to have to eat anyhow. Might as well go across the street and eat good and help support missions at the same time. Also want to remind you, uh, parents, that there's no explorers this week. Uh, we have uh, uh, the stock show and they get out of school, <clears throat> excuse me, get out of school early, so uh, uh, no explorers this week and we'll crank back up again next week there. Also, we made our mission goal offering over $6,000 for our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Amen. I think we talked about this in Missions Council. We have made 13 of the last 14 mission offering goals that we have uh, have uh, put out before our church. And most of them have increased every time. So thank the Lord for that. Also, you got some information about the... Uh, which is, uh, most of you will be aware, it was Disciple Now Weekend. We're calling, changing the name. It's called Ascend Weekend, and that's January 27th through the 29th. And you see the information about that. And different Sunday school classes are helping with the uh, food for that. And there's a place to sign up out in the foyer. If you're not involved in a Sunday school class and you'd like to help out with that, you can sign the, up on that. And that the uh, youth will greatly appreciate having food this, that weekend. So uh, just so you know about that. And I want to direct your attention to the last page there on the back. We have a staff anniversary where uh, Pablo, he's back over there, He's he does all the stuff that nobody sees, but unless he doesn't do it, you know, that's one of those things, he does all kinds of things, and we're going to have a reception for Pablo next Sunday, right after the worship service in the banquet room. He's been here with us for 20 years. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Pablo. Appreciate you, my friend. And every one of us up here uh, appreciate Pablo and Peggy tremendously. So, amen. Y'all, we're going to have a wonderful worship service this morning. Amen. Amen. It is going to be a good day. Stand up with me. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you started here. We are going to celebrate today. So, we're going to praise the Lord. So, if you came in looking frowny, all right, it's not going to fit with the day, all right? So, turn that frown upside down. All right, we're going to have a great morning because we're going to celebrate our King Jesus. So we're going to celebrate this morning that our Redeemer lives. So say that with me. We're going to say, my Redeemer lives. Ready? My, my Redeemer, Redeemer lives. lives. Say it again. My, my Redeemer, Redeemer lives. lives.
may be seated. We are here because our Redeemer lives. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is alive and well, and we are so grateful you're here to worship with us at First Baptist Church. And if you are a guest with us today, we want to say a special welcome to you, and glad that you came to worship with us. We'd like to ask you to do us the honor of taking this form in the bulletin here, fill that out, and drop it in the offering plate later on in our service. If you want to put your name and email, or if you want to put your name and your cell phone number on there, either way, we just want to get to know you, know who you are, and give you any more information about First Baptist Church that you might like, and we hope you'll come back and worship with us again uh, soon. We're going to have a time at the very end of our service where we greet one another, but we do have a very special time planned this morning as we have the Lord's Supper, and then we're also going to have some folks up here sharing about some things that the Lord has been doing in their lives and in this church over this past year. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. But we have been doing our Bible reading uh, this week, and we've got a, a memory verse that we want to put up on the screen right now for us to say together. There it is. This is actually Romans 4, 20 through 22, uh, talking about Abraham and how Abraham had faith and God gave that to him as righteousness. And that's the same for us. And so let's read this, uh, these verses together this morning and then we'll pray. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Romans 4, 20 through 22. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that you have made it possible for us by your power and your promises to trust you and believe in you, that your promises are true, that you do exactly what you say you're going to do every time. And Abraham believed, and it made him right with you. And we thank you that by virtue of that same faith, by your grace, we are saved. When we place our trust and faith in Jesus Christ and your promises that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ, and He's the reason that we are here today, because he lives. He lives within us. He walks with us and talks with us each and every day. And that relationship that we have with our Savior, who is alive, makes all the difference in the world. God, we are a, an Easter people living in a Good Friday world. And we so desperately know people that need help and hope, and it only comes through your Son. And so this morning, Lord, we glorify you. We lift you up. We pray that everything we say and do would be for your glory and your honor. And as we come to this Lord's Supper table this morning, we pray, Father, that you would be honored in that as well, that we remember the sacrifice you made for us and that it would lead us to live lives of sacrifice each and every day for the sake of your kingdom. We love you, Lord Jesus, and it's in your name we pray these things. Amen and amen. Amen. Would you stand with me as we continue to worship this morning? That passage that we did as our memory verse, it, it goes on to say that Abraham was called a friend of God, that, that God reconciled Abraham to himself through his faith. And we can this morning be reconciled to God, and we can be friends of God. Let's sing together. Who am I that you are mindful of? Yeah. 
seated invite our ushers to come forward at this time we take up our tithes and offerings this morning let's pray father we just uh, praise you and glorify you this day we just ask us to be mindful of any blessings that we have the, uh, the hope that you give us through our faith in jesus christ and just as it bless this service Holy Spirit will flow, Father, that, uh, that you take us off and, uh, and bless it, Father, and you through your glory. And bless those that give. And we ask this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art a potter, I am a clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. 
search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Thank you, Matt. We are currently uh, in a series that we're calling One in the Word and looking at different places and ways in the Bible that uh, it talks about one or one thing. And uh, part of that this morning, we're looking at one body, the church. That's us. And as a part of that, we're uh, going to be doing the Lord's Supper. And it's always a very special time as we share in this uh, table together. And so just a, a few words of instruction to remind us about all uh, followers of Jesus Christ are invited to participate with us. You do not have to be a member here at First Baptist Church uh, Goldthwaite to participate. If you are a, a follower of Jesus Christ, been baptized, you're welcome to join us in this meal. Um, also, there are some children always present in these services, and uh, it ought to be a time for you as a parent to instruct your child, if they have received Christ, to help them, assist them with taking this meal. But if they've not made that decision, then just to quietly explain to them what's happening and why they cannot participate. Uh, but uh, this is always a very meaningful time together, and it's a sacred time. And so I would just invite you to uh, enter it reverently. Uh, it's not a time to be talking or a time to be uh, moving around as we worship the Lord through this special time together. Let me read for you from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and these were Paul's instructions about the Lord's Supper. He says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For whoever one, anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. And so when we uh, observe this Lord's Supper, uh, there's really four different ways that we look at this. We, we look backward, we look forward, we look inward, and we look outward. Uh, we look backward because, as Paul said, when Jesus Christ gave this supper to his disciples. He began an ordinance that the church later would practice, just as we do today. And he told them to do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of what? In remembrance of his death on the cross, shedding his blood, giving his body, giving his life for us. That's why every time we take this meal, it is a very tangible reminder to us of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. He said to look forward, Paul said, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The good news about our Lord and Savior is he didn't just die on the cross. He rose again from the grave, and we know he's coming back someday. He promised he's coming back. And so we proclaim the Lord's death and the salvation we have in him 
but we also look forward to the day when he returns because when he comes back, we're going to have the marriage supper of the Lamb with him in heaven. And it reminds us of that. We also look inward. Paul tells us here that we are to examine ourselves. This is probably one of the most profound places, I think, in the New Testament that reminds us to really look inside and examine ourselves because if we're partaking of this supper and we are acknowledging the death of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross for us, we realize it was our sin, my sin, your sin, that put him there. And so we cannot just take that lightly. And we can't just go through our everyday lives doing whatever we want to do and sinning and not recognize the sacrifice our Lord paid for us, for our forgiveness. He took the punishment that we deserved. And so that's the reason Paul says, you need to examine yourself. You need to make sure that you have asked for the Lord's forgiveness, that you are in, in a good place with him, and don't drink judgment on yourself. And, and in fact, in the church in Corinth, in Corinth, there were people who got sick and died because they didn't take it seriously. And I'm not saying the Lord will do that now, but I don't want to take a chance. So I think it's important for us to examine ourselves and look inwardly. But the good news, again, is by God's grace, through the death and, and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness. We can be forgiven. We can be cleansed. Jesus took care of our sin. The penalty of, of our sin is broken. It's gone because of his death on the cross. But now today, the power of sin can be broken when we recognize the Lord Jesus and his life within us and receive his forgiveness. We don't have to be defeated by sin. And then we look outward, and this is the, the most important emphasis that I want to make today is that this represents the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is just a symbol, but it is a symbol of his body and his blood. And isn't it appropriate that Jesus Christ gave his life, gave his body, and then Paul later describes the church as the body of Christ? We are the body. Now, we kind of miss a little bit of the emphasis there because we have little pieces of bread and we have individual cups that we take. But you know, in the early church, and still some churches do this today, when you have a single loaf of bread and a common cup, it reminds us of that. We're, not a, we're, we're many, but we're one in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are one body. Not just this church body, but believers everywhere. If you go somewhere on the other side of the world, believers practice the Lord's Supper. Maybe not exactly in this manner, but they also do this. And we are one body with them. But we are the local body here at First Baptist Church Goldthwaite. And we are celebrating and we're focusing on that emphasis today that God has called us as a church to be His one body uh, right here. And so... The other thing that I love about the Lord's Supper is that as we do this, we pass the plate to one another. We actually, the deacons serve you, and then you serve each other. And maybe we don't think about it that way, but it is. It's an opportunity to serve one another and to demonstrate the unity of fellowship that we have in, Lord, in our Lord Jesus Christ together. And so as we enter this time, I'm going to ask if our deacon body will come and prepare these elements for the Lord's Supper. And as they come, uh, the deacons are going to, in just a few moments, pass out the bread first and then the cup. Uh, we're going to have a prayer before they do that. And then after everyone has been served, uh, we will come back together and, and I will have a scripture that we read together and give you instruction. If you'll just hold that bread uh, and I'll give you an instruction as we partake of that together in just a few moments. But as you're holding that bread and as you're waiting, let me encourage you to think about the body of Jesus Christ. I, when I hold that bread, I, I, I try to picture what it would have been like to actually touch the body of Jesus, to hold that, and to think about what his body went through for me. Also, think about the person who shared Jesus with you. For me, it was my mom and dad when I was a young boy who first shared Jesus Christ with me, and then I was a part of a church much like this one and went to church every Sunday and was grateful for those who shared Christ with me. Who shared Jesus with you? Just thank God for that person as you hold that bread. And so, as I said, uh, 
we will hold that bread, and then, and then when we come back together, we will all take that together at the same time. But at this time, I'm going to ask if uh, Cheston Francis will offer a prayer, uh, thanking the Lord for the bread which represents the body of Christ. Father, we, Father, we thank you for this bread. Just ask that you bless it as a symbol of Christ's uh, bruised and broken body that was given for us. Um, Father, we just... Uh, Thank you for loving us so much that you allowed your son to suffer and die on the cross for us that we might be reconciled and healed of our sin. It's in your name we pray. Amen. First Corinthians ten seventeen says, Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now the deacons will be passing out the cup representing the blood of Jesus and after another prayer as we did before uh, they will be passing those cups to you if you'll just hold that cup and wait uh, as the music is being played and think about the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and your sins your personal sins that he has forgiven because of shedding that blood and think about your life and as you wait for the return of of your coming King Jesus Christ and how you're living your life for Him. And so at this time, I'm going to ask if Dwayne Turner will voice a prayer for the cup which represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we come to Thee, Father, thanking Thee for sending Thy Son, Father, who shed His blood 
that we might be saved. Father, we pray that you would be with each and every one of us, Father, as we partake in this service, Father, that we will remember that it is your Son and his blood that was shed. Father, we ask this in our Son's holy name. Amen. Psalm 116, 13 says, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is coming again. And let me give you this blessing. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and one mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, deacons. Now, at this time, we're going to do something a, a little bit different, uh, shift gears. Uh, I think uh, probably last year, I guess it was, that uh, Butch had shared with me during the interim period, um, they just felt like it would be good for them to kind of give a report to the church, if you want to call it a state of the church. Uh, I don't like to equate that too much with the state of the union, but sometimes we don't always do a good job, perhaps, of communicating uh, with the church about how we doing, you know, what's going on. Uh, in our church fellowship. And so 
I've been here roughly five months now, and so we felt like this would be a good opportunity for us to just kind of give you a report on 2016 and give you some ideas of where we feel like we may be heading as a church. And I've asked uh, five individuals who are going to come up here at this time, come on down and be seated up here. And I've got some questions prepared for them that I've asked them to, uh, to share and uh, some things that I want to share as well. And I appreciate them uh, being willing to do this so much. I'm going to get a little more comfortable myself. Nope, you can sit anywhere you like. And uh, we're going to have them share these microphones right here as they, uh, as they share, and just to pass it around to whoever's talking. And a couple of them are coming still. But as they're still coming, uh, let me just share with you a few, uh, a few numbers uh, from the 2015 to 2016 church year. If you don't know this, the uh, the Baptist Convention, the way, they, uh, the way they do these numbers, typically they run from September of one year to August of the other year. That's kind of considered the church year, even though our, our fiscal year is January to December. And so we always compile all these statistics, and I appreciate uh, Peggy and Butch and their help with this. But um, we currently have 613 resident members, uh, those that are right here. Uh, this past year, there were six baptisms and 16 other additions. Our average worship attendance was 155. Uh, average Sunday school attendance was 165, and that includes our uh, nursing home ministry. And then our VBS enrollment for 2016 was 118. Now, one of the things you've heard a lot about is our Wednesday night program, and that averaged about 105, uh, with our, including our workers among our children in our Explorers program. We have another uh, 75 to 80 youth, uh, students that meet on Wednesday night, including the workers. Uh, we generally average somewhere between six and ten adults that are participating in our Wednesday night prayer meeting. I encourage you to come uh, be a part of that. It's a great time of prayer, and that's the engine right there. All the things that are going on in our church, all the things that are going on all over the building uh, couldn't be happening without some folks praying and lifting those things up. So that's what that group does Wednesday nights at 630 and, and praying for all of our church members, those who are sick in our community. We had, this is an exciting number to me, we had over 300 people involved in various mission projects uh, this last year. We had almost 200 of those in local missions, which would include things like the nursing homes, uh, Operation Good Neighbor, things of that nature. And so that's, that's a very exciting number. We had out of that, uh, 50 to 60 of those served at Church Under the Bridge in Waco, uh, serving the homeless. That's something we do twice a year. And uh, that, that next date, the next date for that coming up is coming up pretty soon, the first Sunday in March. So if you've not done that, uh, consider that. I think it would be a really good experience for you to go. And pretty much they give you what you need to know about how to do that. Uh, so uh, if you just put on some gloves and serve some food and love on some homeless people that need to know Jesus, uh, they would be glad to have you go with them. We had uh, two different people that went on international mission trips, and that's something that we're going to see increase this next year, which is good. Our uh, total receipts for 2016 actually were just under uh, 500,000, had 499,537. Uh, that was slightly less than last year in 2015, but it was actually more than the two years before that. And so um, that's a good, good sign. You know, one of the things about these numbers that, that I think you need to understand is maybe they don't sound all that impressive to you, but one of the things that you often see in churches when you are without a pastor, your attendance will decline your giving will decline. Uh, a lot of things like that typically decline. It's just the nature of the beast. But this church didn't do that. Uh, you remained faithful. You had a good interim pastor in Paul Atkinson. You had a good foundation, uh, some good staff members who were keeping this thing going. And so you should be commended for that church for hanging in there. And, uh, and, and we're, not, we're, we're, we're heading up now, all right? Uh, we are actually uh, going to be voting on our 2017 budget at our conference today, but that, that budget, as it is uh, being proposed, increases the budget by about $25,000. So that is a step of faith. Uh, that may sound like a lot of money, but it equates to roughly $1,500 more a month, so not totally un undoable. And I know that we don't always like to talk about giving, but the only reason I mention that is because we have to recognize not only do we have to pay staff and keep the lights on, and put gas in the bus and, and all that kind of thing. Um, dollars are necessary for ministry. These things that we do, especially with these kids, takes money. 
and a lot of them don't have a way to pay their own way. And so uh, just know that the money that you are giving is being put to, to good use to reach children, use, reach families, and do the work that God's called us to do here. And we want to do better and better all the time. We want to do better at how we're spending God's money. But you know, the amazing thing about a church, unlike a business that's you know, out there drumming up business trying to make money, we depend on God's people, you, giving to the church by faith. That's what it is. You're giving to the Lord through the local church by faith in order that we may do the ministry that we're doing. So never, ever discount the need for those funds that you give. And one of the things we want to try to do better is to help you know how that money is being spent and how, how that can be used to further God's kingdom uh, here. Uh, one of the things that's impressed me about this church as I've come here is that you exceeded all of your mission goals this past year. Uh, Lottie Moon, Annie Armstrong, Mary Hill Davis State offering, every one of those had a goal and exceeded them. So way to go. You can give yourself an applause for that. So, you know, those are just some numbers, but uh, sometimes I think we can get a little lost in the numbers and maybe not think about the actual lives that are involved, the lives that are touched and changed. And so that's why we wanted to have some of these folks here to just be able to share from their perspective uh, things that they've experienced, things that, that they've seen or are seeing. I mean, I could tell you about it, but it's just not the same. And so we have some questions here. Not necessarily going to ask every one of them to share on every one of these, but we'll just kind of see how they feel led to, to share about these things. And so I want to thank you for your willingness to do this. And I'm not going to assume that everybody out here knows who you are. And so I'm just going to first ask if you'll just tell us who you are and uh, whatever else you want us to know about yourself. All right, well, quick, my name's Brady Roundtree. I've um, been a member here for 26 years. The only church I've ever been a member of uh, was baptized here, was married here. Uh, both of my children have been baptized in this church, so I have a lot of history and perspective. And so, you know, grew up here, graduated from high school here, I moved off, found a wife. I drug her back here. <laughs> and uh, just, just love to serve this church. So, All right, thank, thank you. you. I'm Leanne Jernigan. Um, Brian and I have been here with our girls for six years, um, but Brian and I, dating years and all, have been together about 20 years, so I have known this church for 20 years in the time that we dated and the time we got married and now that we've come home here. Um, yes, I was think that's it. <laughs> okay, good. Is this on? It should be on, yeah. Okay. I'm Kay Moore. Uh, Cooter and I have been coming here about 32 years, I believe. Uh, we raised our two girls here. Um, Kimberly moved off to Houston and stayed, and Jennifer moved a short distance, but she's back now, and um, I'm just very, very blessed to be here in this church. Amen. I'm Glenn Benningfield, and um, kind of like Brady, I was raised in this church. I've uh, been here my whole life, except for when I was gone to college, basically. Um, don't think I ever even moved my letter at that time. Um, uh, I was uh, married in this church. Uh, my kids have been baptized in this church. This church is just home. Mm -hmm. I did not grow up in this church. I'm from San Saba County. <laughs> it's all right. My name is Bess Wilcox, and uh, I'm here. I've been here 21 years, and it doesn't seem like that long, but it was 21 years because I counted it up for something else I had to do. And... Uh, you know, it's just a wonderful church to be in. We came here from one that fussed a lot. Mm. I look forward to conferences now because we all are nice to each other. We may not agree, but we're nice. All right. All right. So let me just remind y'all, as you share, just make, don't be afraid of the microphone. Put it up there. If you're too loud, they'll turn you down up there. But we do want everyone to hear what you have to say, okay? So um, let me just start with this one. Uh, for you personally or your family, you know, all of you said you've been, most of you've been here quite a while. And, uh, and for you and your family, love this church. And so as we think about 2016, just describe um, one or two highlights from this past year uh, in our church that may have been really meaningful or important to you uh, with, with the church folks. Everybody, everybody's looking at me, so I guess I'll go first. Yeah, we didn't um, draw numbers, sorry. I mean, a couple of things, this, um, just personally, I mean, real personal, I just see uh, my youngest daughter was baptized um, earlier Amen. this year with Paul, and then... Um, Exciting. Thank you, Greg. I mean, we've been praying for you, won't you? So I just, just to solidify seeing God working in the prayers of this church and just a, 
a couple of big highlights, you know, for us. And then me, again, me individually a little bit is just um, our youth ministry and the things we do, like a, the D nows and the youth camps and the relationships we build and do out of those things that this church supports. It's just something mm -hmm. special that, that I really appreciate. Okay, great. You don't have to go in order, whoever, however you want to do it. Okay. <laughs> Just keep her the microphone. No. Well, the first thing, we're so glad to have Brother Greg here because we were ready for our preacher. We had a great sub, but substitute. Well, <laughs> sub. But Paul's anyway, we're glad he's here. And uh, the Christmas service mm -hmm. on Christmas morning was so wonderful. Families and everybody was here. But I want to t tell all of you how much my family appreciates how good you are to our family. Uh, everybody is so good to William, and y'all love him, and you do good things to him, and it's, we just appreciate all the things that happen here. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to throw in, because I was thinking about this, and uh, of course everybody, you know, with, with Greg and Jill and their family coming here, that's a big deal. But the heart of it to me kept coming back, and I was thinking about it is, God showed up. We've heard that so much. Because God showed up, Paul continued to make that trip yeah. from Dallas every weekend for the first half of the year. Because God showed up, we do have Greg and Jill and them. Because God showed up, our Wednesday night is, it, it continues to flourish, and we're touching mm -hmm. so many lives. So. Amen. Well, Beth stole mine. <laughs> the first, first thing that I think about is... Um, Brother Greg and Jill and uh, their family coming here. Uh, that's, they've just been such a blessing to me. Um, the other thing was the Christmas program. Uh, our community just comes together in such a wonderful way and presents this uh, cantata each year. And of course, I have a love for music anyway, but it just touches my heart in a very special way. Mm -hmm. And it involves... Uh, so many people. And then the third thing is the Wednesday night um, groups that meet, and especially the children, because I um, work uh, in the kitchen on Wednesday nights, and along with some amazing ladies, and we provide the meals for the smaller children. Mm -hmm. So that's the three things that I think of. Amen. All right. Thank you. I don't really have anything new to add. I mean, the blessing that God brought you and your family to our church. And, and I, just, I just remember when, oh man, I just remember that search committee and how they were just, you know, just that emotion behind that, you know, that in their prayers and the search and, and God bringing you. And it was just emotional, you know, and I think when they came forward to our church, we all felt that. Mm -hmm. And so that was just a huge blessing. And just the new members that we've had, and I think in my parents, because my parents have moved here in the last year, and so they have joined our church, and mm -hmm. they're now Gulthwadians with us <laughs> in the body of Christ here with us. Um, and just all the decisions, like Brady said, you know, those who've come to know the Lord this year mm -hmm. or move their membership or join the church. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't pay them to say that, by the way. I just want you to know. <laughs> Uh, it, it goes both ways. Our family has been so blessed coming here. We had a lot of changes going on in our life at one time, as many of you know. And, and there's always a lot of questions and a lot of reservations. You don't know what to expect. But we, I think our expectations have been way exceeded in terms of how you have loved us and supported us and welcomed us and made this transition so much easier, especially for my family. As you know, I'm I'm okay. I knew there'd be changes for me, but I was more concerned about my family, and, and they have just done great and thrived, and we're so blessed to be here, be a part of what's, what's going on here. All right. The next question here is, we talked about this past year, but as we're thinking about right now going forward, what do you see God doing in our church now? What would you share with us about that? Well, we have lots of people coming in new every Sunday. I don't know all the people that come in. But I try, and uh, we have so many children on Wednesday night. Do you know how many kids that we reach for Jesus on Wednesday night? Mm -hmm. It is so wonderful, and that's what I think we're doing. Amen. Your turn. Okay. Well, she, she kind of said it. I mean, look, here we are. It's a cold, foggy day, and this church is nearly packed. Mm 
-hmm. And uh, it continues to increase, and, and it just fills your heart to see all the new people. We've had new people join, and um, the church is just flourishing. Amen. Well, I will echo what Beth said about Wednesday nights because that's just extra special to me. About um, two and a half or three years ago, I felt the Lord leading me to get more actively involved in the church. Uh, as some of you know and some of you don't, I was the organist for 20 years, from 1987 to 2007. And then at that time, I just felt like I had done my time. It was time for somebody else to take over the organist job. So I resigned and I guess you'd say take a, took a respite. <laughs> um, but then, like I say, two and a half, three years ago, I just felt the Lord calling me to be more actively involved uh, because, after all, we're supposed to serve the Lord and uh, not just be spectators. So I kind of started praying about it and thinking, well, now, where could I serve? What, what could I do that would, you know, where could I be involved, Lord? And he just kept telling me, in the children's ministry, in the children's ministry. And I was like, oh, I cannot do that. <laughs> I mean, I substituted one time in elementary school. And I said, no more. Oh, I'll do it in high school, junior high, not elementary. And I was like, I cannot do that. And so finally it dawned on me, well, work in the kitchen. You can do that. And so I just came and started helping Grace and Nell Miller and Judy Mullings were the ones that were working then. And I just had the best time. I was blessed so much. And you know, I found out that I was being blessed as much or more than the kids were being blessed. Amen. And those kids, they come in so excited and just full of all this energy and they may just be as loud as they can be, but that's okay. And then I remember uh, Melissa Mullins, uh, Reyes now, <laughs> uh, telling me, we were talking one night and we said, oh, we're so tired. And she said, yes, but it's a good tired. Mm -hmm. And I said, yep, you're absolutely right. And so anyway, it's, I, I see God working every Wednesday night. I'm with Kay. You know, I, I mean, I even look back over the summer, you know, and just how God just starts preparing, you know, just through our camps that we took the kiddos to. So I'm not over with our children on Wednesday nights, but I'm with the youth on Wednesday nights helping with the food. But over the summer, um, you know, we go to preteen camp, and I was a sponsor there at preteen camp. And, and I think about the theme that was there for the children at that time, and it was rooted, you know, to, to be rooted. And just, you know, what that message was to our kids, that they were being taught how to be rooted in their relationship with Christ. You know, like Psalm 1-3 talks about the tree by the river, mm. you know, and, and, uh, and how it will prosper and not wither. And I just think about we were teaching our children at that time this summer that, you know, how do we do that? We have quiet times. We have prayer. We have, you know... You know, we, we talked about how they grow and develop in their relationship with Christ. And then I go to youth camp as a sponsor. You know, and our youth are hearing how to be unashamed mm -hmm. of their faith and to be intentional. And, um, and I feel like that's our message to all of us because when we come and we listen to you, you're talking about being one in the Word. And, mm -hmm. and God's delivering that message to us about living out our faith and embracing that as a church body. Okay. All right. Let me move on to this next one. Um, what needs do you see in our church or our community that we need to address this year? How can we as a church, God has strategically placed First Baptist Church here in Goldthwaite in Mills County, and we can't meet everybody's need, but there are some needs that we can meet. We're, we're obviously talking a lot about these kids on Wednesday night, but maybe some things that we see that we're, we're not really meeting needs right now. What, what, what would you see are some of those needs this year that we could try to meet? Well, this isn't just this year. But every time the preacher preaches, we tend to say, oh, that so-and-so should listen to that. <laughs> I think we should take the sermons personally and see what we need. Amen. I'll jump in there because I'm with 
I'm with Bess because I think the same thing. I need to self-examine. So like even you asking me these questions, I, this is what I thought to myself. You know, these are things in myself that I see. And, um, you know, just love and outreach is what I see, just loving people unconditionally. You know, not just the people who are easy to love, but love everybody. You know, I mean, I would want the same in return, you sure. know, and, and, and just reaching out to those in our community because we do have needs in our community. And, um, goodness, I just think in this last month, I think of, and I know there's probably more involved, but I think of three ladies here within our church that were just caring for somebody who desperately needed some help. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, sometimes you get a little dirty in that situation, and it takes time. And, and um, I just feel like in those hard situations when we're reaching out to others and loving people, that's when they see Christ. Mm -hmm. And you're in a unique position at the school because you're working with those children and those families. Um, so are, are those some areas that you see where our church can make a difference in the lives of some of those kids and families that you work with? Yes, I do. I mean, just seeing needs at school and, and um, knowing about those. And, and um, this one was just not even school related, but just, you know, these ladies knew of this situation. And, and, but definitely. Okay. Yeah, one thing I will say is uh, in looking at some uh, demographic information, I don't know if you know this or not, but 17% uh, of people in Mills County actually live in poverty. Did you know that? 17%. That's a huge mission field, church, that needs to be helped. And I think that we're, of course, very equipped uh, as a church to do that. Maybe one of the reasons why some of these kids are so hungry on Wednesday nights, but uh, we need to be praying about that. Did somebody else have something they wanted to I, I can add? just re echo that kind of a, a little bit real quick. The, uh, you know, we talk about the kids and Wednesday night activities, but something's been on my heart, been praying for a while. It's just those families. So those parents, they come up here and they drop their kids off. And I would say 90% of those kids obviously don't attend here. And I would say 50% of them don't attend any church. And so when we ask them, hey, what'd you do last Sunday? Where'd you go to church? They said, well, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, where'd you go on Sunday? Well, we don't go on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so Wednesday night is church to them. And so, but that family, you know, there's a mom, there's a dad, there's a caregiver, there's siblings there. Um, you know, we're feeding, we got these kids, we're feeding, nurturing them, but how can we, how can we make church a viable, a good, a place for those families to say, man, I need that too. My, you know, I'm dropping my kids off. I know my kids need it, but then I need it. Mm. And, you know, church is relevant in my life. It's not just something we go and do on Sunday, but it's, it's a healthy part of, a, of just maturing as, a, as an adult and, and my my, I, to recognize not just my kids need it, but I need it and my family needs it. And for us to have services to help them um, to grow and to see how churches is a vital part of just um, mm -hmm. healthy growth as, as a family and as an individual. Amen. All right. Uh, we, uh, some of us were involved this weekend in a uh, vision planning uh, retreat. And, and one of the things that came out about this was sometimes our tendency is to focus on, on the numbers, on the attendance. And a lot of times people say, well, these kids and these families aren't here on Sunday morning. Why, why can't we, how can we get them here on Sunday morning? And, and the point came up that is our goal to just get people here on Sunday morning? I mean, is our goal just to get bigger numbers? And really the answer should be no, because our ultimate purpose and goal as a church, as God's people, is for people to come to know Jesus, to, to make disciples. And so what we're seeing is an opportunity here with these kids on Wednesday night to make disciples and reach them on Wednesday night. God has given that to us. That hopefully will translate in some form or fashion to people perhaps being involved on Sunday. But the point is, is that we, we need to care about them, not just them being a number here on Sunday morning. Does that make sense? And so we want to make sure we keep the goal in mind here of what we're really trying to accomplish. And, and if God does a work in their heart, they're going to see the need for the church in their life in some way, to be a part of what's going on here. And, and there's a lot of barriers. you got to think. I mean, a lot of people walk in here and they think this is a big, what we've heard, it's the big red brick church, the rich church, whatever. And it's a, it's a barrier for people to walk into this place. And so we need to find ways to break down those barriers, to help people be more comfortable here, to know their kids have a place to be, to know that they're going to be fed spiritually. And, and a lot of them don't even know what their spiritual needs are. Uh, and so we've got to get out there and find out what those are for them. Um, last thing I want to just ask you about is, um, and I don't know how, you may, how much you've thought about this, but if you could just say there's one thing, what is one thing you would like to see happen in our church this year? What would it be and why? Bess had hers written down. I'm sure she's ready. I am old, and <laughs> I have nothing, you can tell that, uh, but I worry about the nursery. I think we should do something more with the nursery than we do now. 
I, just something that kind of echoes with what we're talking about on Wednesday. On the Wednesday. I, would like, I would like to see um, everybody sitting in this building right now, everybody who's on that membership role for FBC, find a place that you can invest in this church. Find a place to serve. We have some incredible ministries. We go to the nursing homes. We have the Wednesday night we're talking about. We, we have some needs upstairs right now in the audio video where we're trying, I mean, hopefully within a few weeks or months we can have our churches where we're streaming live across YouTube. I was just talking to some kids up there. And there are some awesome opportunities to serve this church, and I think that give everybody that know, for us to first know about them and then for everybody to get plugged in and not just be, I just made a little to it earlier, not just be show up here on Sunday and be a fan, but find out where you could put on like a T-shirt that said, I am FBC, and, and serve. Mm -hmm. And... and we all can't do everything, but we all can do something. Amen. And so just make those um, opportunities available and just get plugged in. Amen. Okay. Yeah, I just want to echo what Brady said, and I know Kay said this earlier, but just getting out of our comfort zone because, you know, I mean, Les was talking about our um, new study that we're fixing to do about I'm a church member, but how we all bring different things, and God can use those different things as a church body you know, into, you know, different ministries that we can do and not limiting how God can use us. But I'm obviously not comfortable being up here today, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this is something small in comparison and how we can serve God in our church and in our community. Amen. All right. I would like to echo that same thing. Um, everybody has a gift. Some people have more gifts than one. But everybody has a gift. Everybody can serve in some way. And you have no idea the blessing you will receive and the blessing that you will give mm -hmm. if you just serve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm with them. Uh, step out of your comfort zone. I'm um, talking to myself here. Go to church under the bridge. Uh, God will bless you in different ways that you didn't know imaginable. Come up here on Wednesday night and see the kids. If you're having a bad day, or if something's just not going right, come up here. Just, I mean, I'm not saying sign up like we do on a regular basis. Just come up for whenever and just spend the evening with us and stuff. You'll, you'll be blessed. Amen. All right. Well, I want to I wanna thank these for um, sharing that. Obviously, there's a lot, a lot of other things that we could share about. But uh, just to kind of echo and, and reiterate some things that, that they were saying, um, yeah, we, one of the things that when I first got here was we were seeking to renew our greeter ministry. I say renew because there were some people doing some greeting, but we had about uh, 20, 15 to 20 people who had expressed an interest in that, but that's still open. We still need folks who can greet folks as they come uh, here on Sunday morning because we have to realize, why do we do that? Well, are we just trying to be a friendly church? No, it's because the Lord accepts us, doesn't, doesn't he? He accepts us with open arms and loves us unconditionally. And that's how we want people to feel when they walk in this place, to be accepted and loved. And so that greeter ministry is a really important thing that we're, we're trying to do. Uh, Brady was talking about the uh, live streaming. We've revamped our church website. If you haven't gone to check that out, I encourage you to do that. We're working to kind of keep that up to date as best we can. But one of the things we've added, or will be adding, thanks to my son Matthew, we are, are setting that up to do live streaming. And so someone said, well, you know, I know somebody that needs to hear that sermon. Well, we've already got audio sermons online, so if you miss it or you know someone that needs to hear it, just do that humbly, okay? You need to hear that sermon. Um, <laughs> but uh, because we do need to evaluate it ourselves first. I, I, have to, I have to evaluate myself every time I preach. Uh, but uh, we, we are going to have that capability, which is really good for us to be able to share with other folks. The streaming is actually going to allow us to live stream the entire worship service, including the music. And, and that's a great possibility for ministry. A lot of people don't realize that can go literally around the world. There are churches our size, and, there, and there'll be people in Africa and Asia who will click on there and watch. And that's just phenomenal that we have that kind of international outreach possibilities. Uh, but we're working to get that in place soon. Um, I have done a weekly pastor's update email. If you're not on that list and you'd like to be, let me or Patrick or Butch know. We can get your email address and add you to that list. Uh, just a way to communicate with you about what's going on in the church and, and, and hear something from me on a, on a regular basis, not every single week. Uh, we, of course, last fall uh, did 40 days of prayer and fasting. We felt like that was an emphasis we really needed to do last fall as our, our nation was in a critical time period. Now we are entering this, this year doing one in the Word. And so part of my job as a pastor is to help this church focus on the Word of God and prayer. 
Uh, and so we're doing, doing this emphasis on, on one in the Word and reading through the F260 reading plan. And, and again, if you've not gotten involved with that, it's not too late. That's the great thing about this. You can start today, and, and you may not be able to catch up, but you can start today and go all the way around to next January. Uh, we've still got plenty of books right up here that are available for, for you to get one, $15, or you can do the app either way you want to go. But uh, I've already heard some good things from people about just when we take the time to read through God's Word. It's not going to be every chapter, every verse, but it's going to be the most important things that we want to focus on as we read through that together. Uh, I, I have very much enjoyed having the freedom on Wednesday nights to, to see what's been going on with these kids and these youth. Um, I, I, I met with the Explorers group on one Wednesday night and actually shared the gospel uh, with all of those children. So they're hearing the Word of God. They're hearing the gospel. And a lot of them are asking a lot of questions. Um, a couple of different occasions, I was able to meet with the girls, uh, Explorers groups, and they had some really good questions. Uh, but we had a great time together to, to discuss those. And so they're eager to learn. They want to know. They want to they wanna hear uh, what God's Word is saying. Um, and so I enjoyed doing that, enjoyed kind of scoping out, seeing what's going on with the youth, and I'm looking forward to being uh, involved in, in terms of just being a part of what's going on with Disciple Now coming up soon. Um, uh, we also had, as we mentioned, the Christmas cantata. Uh, and I heard so many people. I, I, was, I enjoyed singing uh, with that group this year, but so many people mentioned how how much that blessed them. We had so many people, we had over 400 people here between two performances, and a lot of people said, well, that's the best one we've ever had. And I thought, my goodness, you've been doing this for a long time. That's saying a lot. Uh, but we want to continue to do those things that we feel like God is blessing. Um, as I mentioned, we had a, a vision planning team retreat uh, this weekend. Uh, we had asked 16 people who would gather together, pray, uh, seek the Lord's will, and we're just working together on some of these things that we're talking about to say, God, what is your vision for First Baptist Church Goldplay? What are you calling us to do in 2017 and beyond to be the people of God that you call us to be here? And we had a really great time, a lot of really good discussion, uh, and, just, and just are looking forward to what the Lord is leading us to. So I would ask you to pray uh, for them and for me, and, and pray as they have been talking about, about you hear a lot of this information and you kind of say, well, okay, so what? So what? What does this mean to me? Um, and and uh, the, the, the main focus of the scripture that I wanted to read here this morning was in Ephesians 4, uh, verse 4, it tells us, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And so... Again, we are one body. We're not all the same. We're many. That Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, that's what Paul said. We are many parts, but we make up one body. And so that's the beauty of the body of Christ. Each of us has a part that we can contribute. We need to be committed and connected to the body of Christ, or we don't function as God intends for us to. And so you need to ask yourself, well, what am I doing to contribute to the body of Christ here in this church? How can I contribute, just as Kay was saying, what is it that I can do? I may, and you may think, it's not much. I can't do much. Everybody can do something. Some, some, some people have told me before, well, all I can do is pray. And I go, what do you mean all you can do is pray? We need prayer warriors. That's the most important thing anybody can do. Um, and so we all have a part to play for us to be all that God wants us to be. And so that's an important thing for you to do, to be praying about and considering how God is calling you uh, in, in some way to be a part of what he's doing here, to contribute and commit to his body because it is his body. It's not our body. He's the head of the body, and we follow his leadership. And you know, some of you here may be here today, and, and you may think, well, I don't know about joining, you know, being a part of this church fellowship. Well, uh, the thing we need to remember is uh, you are called first to believe. You're called first to be a part of the family of God. That's the larger body of Christ worldwide, a part of the body of Christ in terms of your belief. But then we're also called to belong. We're called to belong to a local body of believers like this church in order for God to speak to us and work through us right where we are. And, and that's one thing that's so encouraging to me as I've gotten to know you and, and this church is to see all the different ways that people are serving God so faithfully. We have such wonderful, faithful people here, and that's really what makes a church happen. I'm just blessed to be able to be in a leadership role and, and lead you and encourage you and equip you in that. Um, and so we're all in this together. And so, uh, so I don't want us to leave this morning without recognizing that it's not just hearing a bunch of good reports. It's not hearing a bunch of good stuff. It's about 
what, is this, what does this mean for me? What is God saying to me this morning that I need to take action on? And so let me, let me thank you all for your time. You can go back to your seats, and we're going to uh, enter into a time of invitation here before we dismiss. And As the uh, instrumentalists come, like I say, you are... Uh, you are, uh, this is a time for us to just reflect on what we've heard this morning. Um, if you are here this morning and you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, uh, it's the most important decision you can ever make. That's the first step you take is, is that of becoming a part of the family of God by accepting Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord, confessing your sins, believing in Him, and making Him part of your life. And so if, you, if you're here and you need to make that decision, I'm here at the front. Uh, maybe you've already made that decision to follow Jesus Christ, but you haven't been baptized and, and you need to make that public, then, then we'd love for you to come and make that decision this morning. Or maybe you're here and you say, I know this is where God's leading me to be a part of First Baptist Church Goldthwaite, and you can come and share that decision with me and we'll share that with the church and we'll rejoice with you as you join with this family. It's, it's a wonderful church family. As you've heard these folks testify their experience uh, in this church body. And so as we stand, as they sing, you do as the Lord leads. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see.
would, just be seated, seated just for a moment. I uh, need to share with you some, uh, some decisions here this morning and introduce some folks to you. Uh, and if you just want to kind of stand right there where you are, I won't make you come all the way up here. But this is the Avance family, Lanton and Kimberly, and Jojo, Aaliyah, Jeremiah, and Caleb. Did I get all that right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, just making sure. Um, and uh, uh, Lanton and Kimberly are coming uh, from another church body, uh, uniting with us. And then Caleb is actually uh, came to know Christ at the FCA uh, rally, Fields of Faith rally, and made a decision for Christ there. And he's going to be baptized next Sunday. So if you would welcome them, amen. <laughs> welcome them into our church family. And their kiddos are all, there's some of these that are here on Wednesday night every week. And so if you'd welcome them, they've been worshiping with us for a while. Uh, I know that you'll want to come by and welcome them and congratulate them. So you'll just be right there. And then we also have thank you, uh, Alicia, Alicia Tamplin and her daughters Shauna and Marissa. And uh, she's joining us. She says, I'm coming back home. So some of y'all already know them, I know. But if you would welcome them into our church fellowship here at First Baptist, say amen. amen. And, yeah, and you can clap, sure. <laughs> no, the... The good thing about it, and you can just right there, and they'll come by and welcome you in just a moment. Uh, you know, God is the one who adds to his body. We don't. And he knows exactly where he wants these people to be in our body. He, joined, he has brought them here to join with us. And so uh, the responsibility goes both ways. Uh, they have a responsibility as members of the church to contribute something, but we have a responsibility to them. And so I know you'll want to come by and let them know how much you, you just want to encourage them and welcome them into our church body and help them become all that God wants them to be here among us. All right, well, let's stand as we get ready to conclude. We do have our church conference here just a moment after we finish our service. Uh, some of you are obviously going to go all, the, all across the street and get your baked potato and support our Ecuador mission trip. Hope we'll all do that. And then uh, we, uh, the bulletin actually said there's a, an evening service. There's not an evening service. We do have some home groups meeting tonight. I wanted to make sure you were aware of that. And then, uh, like I say, after we dismiss, don't run out of here too fast to get a potato because we do want you to greet and welcome other folks around you. Uh, I'm grateful to have my friends Calvin and Margaret Stelly here from First Baptist Kingsland. It's good to see you folks today. And, uh, Glad, glad to have you. So we're going to conclude with a song. Let's sing What a Mighty God We Serve. We'll sing it twice through. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him, heaven and earth adore Him, what a mighty God we serve. Have a great morning. Come by and say, tell these folks hello. Hello.